You're right there, ladies and gents. How's it going? I'm out and I'm trying out all my new gear, all my new rucker, my new gloves, and my new crash helmet. I'm trying out the GoPro Hero 8 Black. I'm trying out the GoPro Max. I'm trying out my new Gucci Garmin Satnav with tire pressure and monitoring system. I'm generally the guy with all the gear and no friggin' idea. <laughs> and keep that bar from a down. Anyway, what am I doing other than testing this stuff? Not a lot really. I'm just enjoying this lovely sunny day. It's been so frustrating just having rain, rain, rain all the time pretty much constantly. So uh, yeah, this is brilliant. It's brilliant to have some sunshine at last. So yeah, the roads aren't dry and uh, there's not a lot of temperature in my tyres, but it's all fun. It's all fun because the sun's out. And according to my tyre pressure monitoring gauges, my tyres aren't quite at the right pressures either. Uh, yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, science and stuff. I need to work on that. So this GoPro Max Jobberoo, it's very much like the Insta360, the One X but it's got some extra little bits and bobs that you can't do with the One X. Like you can adjust the horizon on it, which I think is an amazing thing to be able to do. I really hope they implement that on the One X or at least the One X sequel that's been rumored. It's also slightly waterproof. I don't know how deep, but that's irrelevant because I'm not a diver. Although going by my recent motor vlogging escapade out with Lamb Chop Rides and Mr. Fish, some might think that I do do diving in poo. <laughs> I don't know whether you all have seen that video yet, uh, but yes, it was a very, very enjoyable day out, even if we did end up getting home stinking, stinking I say. So yeah, it's that time of year, Black Friday deals and all that sort of stuff, that's why I've got all the gadgets, that's why I've got all the kit. I also kind of found out by accident that I've been saving some money. I don't know what it is that I've finished paying off, but it meant that my bank balance was kind of going up for a bit. I've sorted that out though now. There's nothing left in it. <laughs> I've also got my uh, Senna 30k on as well, which uh, I got in the sales. Not that I saved much money on it. I think it was about a tenner I saved. Terrible deal. <laughs> uh, but I haven't switched it on. Because I know where I'm going, um, I don't really need it to be telling me directions. And because I'm an antisocial git, I don't really want any phone calls while I'm out enjoying myself on the motorbike. So it's no point pairing it with my phone or the sat nav really and wasting the battery not that the battery life on it is particularly shabby from what i've been told but yeah so i've got lots of kit and i'm looking forward to getting my hands into its depths into its dirty little depths and finding out all its little secrets and get my head around how beneficial it will be to me wrong side of the road dude wrong side of the road with the biggest fucking digger on toe, twat. What the fuck is he doing? So yes, expect some reviews or at least some talk throughs of some of this kit at some point in the future. Probably once the winter really kicks in and I can get out on the bike a little bit less. Currently, I wouldn't say it's very wintry. It's just wet and miserable. He says, with the bluest sky and the shiniest yellow orb in it. <laughs> I am so far quite impressed with this crash helmet though. It is very lovely. It fits really plush. I've only had it on for about 20 minutes, so not really the perfect test to tell how comfortable it is over time, but it feels very comfortable and very supportive. And I don't feel like I'm getting any pressure points on it just yet anyway. But I always do with every single crash helmet I have. I always end up having problems with it because I've got an odd shaped head. My noggin is not normal. <laughs> I recently did a video of the bike show which did amazingly well I was like really surprised how well that did I didn't expect it to get very many views at all um, yeah uh, so awesome that's blinding stuff that is uh, but when I was doing that all my clothes out I got on the bike and I went for a little ride and I used the GoPro Max for that too but it was pouring down with rain and uh, the footage really came out incredibly terrible so uh, lesson learned although it is waterproof it's not very useful in the rain because once you get water on that lens it just distorts everything and doesn't look very good i'm going to have to see if there's any hydrophobic uh, lens coverings i can get for it or something like that i've got them for my gopro hero 5 session and uh, on that very same video 
the GoPro Hero 5 session stayed bone dry, but the Max didn't. <laughs> I'm currently running an audio recorder as I'm still waiting for GoPro to release the um, media thing, media module for the, the uh, Hero 8. And uh, yeah, I think we can stop pre-ordering that at the beginning of December. So uh, yeah, I'll get that ordered as soon as I can. I don't like running millions of bits of kit, which you'd never know because I've got millions of bits of kit. <laughs> but I don't like to have more than I, I, I need. And having an audio recorder is a real pain in the arse, especially if the mic lead detaches itself mid-vlog and you don't know and you've just got the whole trip is wasted, wasted. However lovely it is having the sun out this time of year, because it's so low, it is just so hard to see. And the dark visor I've got on my shoey is just fantastic. It's really taking that damage, that brightness, the harshness of that sun away from me so I can still see the road quite well. I'm riding like an absolute pansy. Who cares? I want to stay on the bike. I don't want to fall off and it is well slimy. I have just turned seven years on owning my Moto Guzzi V7 though. And that is something I'd like to do, is do a uh, video about seven years of owning it. I think that would be quite cool, quite interesting for people. Because not a lot of people these days keep their bikes for huge lengths of time due to the fantastic PCP deals you can get. And why would you? when you can get a new bike every couple of years for only a hundred quid a month or whatever it is that they cost. Seeing how that all works out is really kind of put a spanner in the works for me. I've always in the past either bought my bikes on credit cards and then owned them outright and just paid them off before the interest free periods ran out and stuff like that. Um, but the fantastic deals you can get on a PCP deal and if you're not doing mega high mileage then it's, it's certainly doable, isn't it? And because I have multiple bikes, it's easier for me to keep the mileage down on each one. Which means it's easier for me to get new bikes, which is good and bad. I mean, it's nice to keep a bike for a while, get to know it, get to love it, like I have done with the Moto Guzzi. But it is also nice to chop and change. Have something different in the stable every now and again. I look at the bigger YouTubers, and they are so lucky with the, the little... Uh, perks they get or long-term loans and stuff like that and uh, that is a, no way um, any form of resentment there I mean there's absolute joy I mean I'm, I'm, I love that they get to do that that's just fantastic it's showing the change in the media's perception of us youtubers of uh, what we have to offer and the bike manufacturers are finally cottoning on and letting these guys have long-term tests and stuff brilliant stuff it's brilliant stuff so i'm experimenting with a slightly longer recording with the gopro max just to see how it gets on with the longer stuff it's not been without issues for me and uh, it's been very difficult for me to get it to to work in the way i want it to work as when it was initially launched the app for android wasn't optimized for my phone the uh, samsung galaxy note 10 plus so yeah, it didn't work very well. I wasn't able to do any of the 360 stuff. It was all right when I was doing just the um, single lens, the hero mode with the camera, because then you didn't need to do it on your phone. You didn't need to edit it on your phone. You can just stick it on PC and edit it there. But the 360 stuff, you just have to really do it on your phone. It's so much more intuitive and it allows you to do so much more as well. Like twisting the horizon for example oh what a glorious day and it feels glorious too I mean this winter gear I've got I'm definitely not cold I mean I do have a jumper on and a t-shirt on underneath it but I'm definitely not cold and it's really really comfy too which I think makes a huge difference to how well you can ride especially when the conditions out are not ideal because you do, you tense up a little bit. And by being comfy, at least that makes relaxing just that little bit more easier to achieve. Filtering, filtering, filtering along. Mm. 
it is so beautiful this time of year isn't it going through the trees with all the leaves off them and the sun shining through them I just wish it was more conducive to uh, fun riding. Still fun though, still fun. Wowzers, floodplains are well up. I remember when all this was fields. <laughs> hey, Maddie, that's a lot of water. This is a lovely little road when it's clear. I don't know why I like it. I guess it's a sort of um, like a nostalgic feel to it. As a young'un, I used to come down this road with my old man quite a lot. He used to be a fast driver. He'd tear along the country lanes. He always used to have Sierras. The uh, rear wheel drive job roos. Yeah, I think he's where I got my adrenaline gene from. Well, I'm a grandma. Blooming woman, parascending. At 80 years old. <laughs> what a wonderful, wonderful lady. I'll tell you what, although the front wheel is a little bit overpressured, it's uh, so much better than it was when it was under pressured. <laughs> I think what had possibly happened was I'd forgotten to... Uh, put the pressures back up after my last track day so they were all a little bit soft for the road use and it meant the bike was a little bit sluggish to turn as it wasn't quite as uh, I don't know the tyres weren't as profiled as they need to be profiled they, weren't, they were squashed too much yes so a quick question for any of you with these Zumo sat navy jobs uh, how did you wire it in? I've wired mine directly to the battery and that means that whenever I plug in the Zumo sat-nav, whether the bike's on or off, it automatically starts charging. And it's got a little USB jobberoo as well. Um, and that's obviously going to be constantly powered too. Is there a way I can wire it, to those of you in the know on the street triple, is there a way I can wire it where it's uh, switched on the ignition? I'd love to uh, have your feedback on that, that'd be awesome. But anyway, let's get up this hill. full of my speed going up here it's uh, not the warmest of days but I've got plenty of grip it would seem anyway right if you haven't done so already please click that subscribe button if any of the bits of kit I've got interest you you might well like some of the reviews and talk throughs I have all that stuff at a later date and if you like this video why not give it a little thumbs up and if you didn't, you can always give it a little thumbs down. That's all cool, I don't mind. But whatever you do, please do drop in a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Anyhow, I'm going to close out now on this glorious, glorious sunny Sunday. Not that it's a Sunday, but the sun is in the sky and it is a day. You take care. Ride safe. And I shall catch you all in the next one. Bye-bye for now. And keep that bar. Ramasai down. Hey, no, you gotta keep that bar. Ramasai down.